you gorgeous individuals it's caviar and today i'm going to be talking about racism in the book community that's right i'm bringing diversity 101 back and unfortunately it's due to some horrifying yet unsurprising recent events that transpired in the book community to be quite honest with you all i considered titling this video something different i assumed no one would watch this video with its current title or that it would get a ton of backlash, but any other title would undermine the significance of the events that transpired, so it wouldn't accurately describe what I'm discussing in this video. I'm not going to be discussing the specifics of the recent events in this video. That would take up valuable time that I would much rather direct towards the discussion aspect of this video, so I'm just going to get into that discussion right now. <laughs> I think the overarching baseline of this video is that far too many white authors and white members of this community have an unadulterated sense of arrogance as well as a fear that as more people of color get seats in this community, they will lose their seat in the community. So that encompasses two different subtopics. The first being that white authors don't think they'll face any consequences for their actions. But 9.99999 times out of 10, it's not only that they think they won't face any consequences for their actions, they actually don't. And that is why they continue acting in such reprehensible ways. Christy Doherty, an openly racist author, no longer has a Twitter, but she's still selling books and making book deals. Mackenzie Lee has been called out by people of color time and time again, yet she has faced absolutely no consequences for her actions. She is absolutely fine. Zoe Marriott and Alina Boyden are both white authors who appropriated Asian cultures in their books, Chinese and Indian cultures respectively, and yet their books are still getting tons of support while the Asian readers who are being harmed by their books are the ones who are getting tons of backlash from non-Asian, likely white reviewers and being called racist and such. These four examples are merely that. Examples. There are countless more that I can think of off the top of my head because that is how prevalent racism is in this community. I believe a lot of that is rooted in the second subtopic I want to discuss in this video. White members of this community are scared of people of color. I individually attempted to speak to, not confront, but politely speak to three of these four authors. I tweeted both Alina Boyden and Zoe Marriott while the controversy, I do not believe that controversy is an accurate term as I think that somewhat belittles the situation, but it's the best term I have at the moment. So while the controversy was at its most popular and I was ignored by Zoe Marriott and immediately blocked by Alina Boyden, I always make an effort to be especially polite when reaching out to initiate dialogue because I don't think a hostile approach will lead anywhere. And I know for a fact that I put extra effort into that polite approach when reaching out to Alina Boyden and she blocked me immediately. And with Mackenzie Lee, I have given her numerous chances. I intended to read The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, her first novel. I even met her in person and I have politely corrected her multiple times. She never made any attempt to learn. I truly believe that in these instances specifically, and in the majority of the instances I'm referring to, which is racism in the book community, that it is not because these authors don't care. I believe their racism is rooted in their being so privileged that they cannot possibly fathom the impact their actions have on people of color. That they are so arrogant that they truly believe they are so far beyond consequences, partially because the publishing industry rarely, if ever, does make them face consequences, and that they are downright scared of people of color. I say none of that to justify their actions. All of that is just as fucked up as if they plainly did not care about people of color. And all of that ultimately leads to them not truly caring about people of color. But I just don't believe that racism 
is as simplistic as a plain black and white issue, I think there's a lot of gray area in between. Just like in society, the system, which in our case is the publishing industry, has freed white authors and white members of our community of consequences from their actions and let them run wild, so it's no surprise that this is where we are now. So going forward, what do we do? Firstly, I have linked to a few people in the description below who I highly, highly, highly recommend you follow. They all speak about these issues quite regularly and they also boost the voices of others who also speak about these issues quite regularly so they will also lead you to more voices who you should also follow and support and they are wonderful people in general so you should definitely support them and support their voices in this community. Secondly, I will also link you to my how to be a good ally video in the description below as well. I truly do believe that that video covers a lot of the basics of what it means to be a good ally to a marginalized person. In this case, specifically to people of color. And if you are marginalized in any other way, if you are a queer white person or a disabled white person, it is still really important to learn how to be an ally to a person of color as well. Because if you are a white person, you have to learn how to be an ally to a person of color. That is extremely important because our issues are often really pushed under the rug. And thirdly, if you're a white person, support and boost the voices of people of color always. Support us when these types of racist discussions and actions spark up again, because they will. Support our content and our voices always. And if you're a person of color, find your community. Don't try to make it through this alone, and remember to take breaks. You are not a machine built to take abuse from a broken and oppressive system. You are a living and breathing human being who deserves far more than this world is capable of giving you. If you took the time to watch the entirety of this video, thank you. I really truly do appreciate it. I hope you took away something useful from it, and I really hope that you take the time to look through the links in the description of this video because it can't just end here. The conversation has to keep going and action has to be taken. It can't just keep being a discussion. It has to turn into something more. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy right now and I hope that you're taking care of your mental health right now. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you took away something useful from this video. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe because it would truly, truly mean a lot to me. And comment down below and let me know what you think we can do to support people of color going forward. As usual, all of my social media and my Goodreads and my coffee link will be in the description below if you'd like to support me anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a lovely day night wherever you are. Please remember that you are beautiful and you deserve the world. I love you all and I will see you soon for a brand new video. Goodbye.